Thanks for joining us here on the Road Run Review, but really, where else would you rather be? We have one of, if not the best men's basketball team on the planet. We have top plays from January and a special one-on-one -on -one interview with a star athlete. And don't forget, Eric, the beautiful Paul Dorellis is here and she brings us all the latest Road Runner news. Oh, thanks guys. You definitely know how to make a lady feel special. And speaking of great ladies, two former Roadrunners have earned special honors after being named Sports Women of Colorado back on January 17th. Softball outfielder Molly Clark and basketball guard Jasmine Cervantes were named among Colorado's top athletes from 2012. Clark spent five seasons with the softball team and was named All-Conference three times. She was also named the RMAC's Most Valuable Player in the 2010 Conference Tournament. She was a key cog in the team's World Series appearance that same season. Cervantes also played her entire career for the Red and Blue and led the runners to their most successful seasons in 2010 and in 2011. She is the program's all-time career leader in assists and recorded the program's only triple-double. Clark will be given the softball award while Cervantes will be honored for the leadership award. Congratulations to both ladies. And more congratulations are in order as seven basketball stars were named to the all Armac academic team. On the men's side, sophomore guard Mitch McCarron was tabbed as the academic player of the year, sporting an impressive 3.91 grade point average in sports industry operations. Jonathan Morse and Nicholas Kay also joined McCarron on the first team. On the women's side, Emily Wood and Amy Nelson were named to the all Armac second team, while Kristen Valencia and Brandy Valencia were named to the honor roll. Wow, 3.91 grade point average. That's amazing. Thanks, Paula. What was your GPA last semester? Uh, perfect, 4.0, straight A's. 4.0, I'm was. very proud of you. What was Peter's while well, he's not here? Uh, I don't think it was 4.0. Wow, well, too bad. <laughs> too bad for you, Peter. Well, congrats to all our road runners, both current and former. Time to bring you our Nashi ranked men's basketball team. We finished off December ranked second in the nation after starting the season 9-0 and 6-0 in the RMAC. The Roadrunners kicked off January with a home game against always tough and athletic New Mexico Highlands. The Cowboys jumping out to a fast start, Lionel Coleman with an acrobatic move to put his team up 5 to nothing in the early going. Metro loves the defensive pressure, Demetrius Miller with the steal, and he takes it himself for the bucket and the foul. Fellow guard Brandon Jefferson hits back-to-back -back threes late in the first half to put his team up 43-38. to Second half now and Metro's offense is rolling. Miller finds Jonathan Morris in the paint for the layup and the foul. The big man from Boulder put in 12 points and added 8 rebounds. How about some help from the bench? Deshaun Phoenix with a fake and the easy lane to the basket. Roadrunners cruise to the 92-71 win. We had to keep him out of transition. That was probably the number one goal. Uh, we knew we had to rebound. Uh, just knowing personnel and what they can do and yeah, trying to keep him off offensive rebounds. Well, transition, you know, they get a lot of their baskets, you know, when you shoot the basketball and you don't rebound it, they run in transition. So we wanted to be really good about controlling the basketball and slowing them up, getting them in a half court game, taking that transition away. Uh, they had been getting 83.3 points leading the league and uh, we held them to 71, so job well done. The following weekend, Metro State's defense stifled Colorado Christian, holding the Cougars to just 43 total points, and sophomore forward Nicholas K scored 16 points in the 80-43 blowout win. On to Golden, where Metro took on Colorado Mines. Let's flash back to the last time these two teams played in this building. Ah yes, the Central Region Championships when the Ordiggers were ranked number one in the nation, hosting the regional tournament. Jefferson hits the bank three, and it was the Roadrunners who pulled off the upset, earning a trip to the Elite Eight. Back to this season, and mine's looking for some revenge. And what is Kay doing at the three-point line? Ah, oh, it's cool, he's just draining threes. The odds was perfect from downtown hit on all four long balls he took. Brian Muller led the Diggers in scoring with 11 points. Metro clinging to a five-point lead at the halfway point. But Miller and Jefferson had a field day against the inexperienced guards of the Ordiggers. They combined for 40 total points, including 4-7 from beyond the arc. Check out this nifty move from Miller. That is just dirty. No revenge would be taken on this night by the School of Mines as the runners go 13-0 and 9-0 in the Armac after the 77-61 road victory. Well, like Coach said, uh, the pressure is going to wear on the new guards. They never played against us before, so they didn't know what to expect. And we took that as an advantage. And once 
we saw that the guards were backing down, then that's when me and BJ started to make our push. And as uh, experienced guards, we need to know that with any team. You know, you got to take advantage of the mismatch and try to, you know, score on it as much as possible. The guards did a great job of moving the ball and dribbling into gaps, which forced their defense to collapse, and that's where the open shots came from. If the Mines game wasn't big enough, the Roadrunners took on unbeaten Adams State the next weekend, and the winner would take on sole possession of first place in the Armac. The Grizzlies with a great start. John Jackson feeds the streaking Rodrigo Silva, who throws it down. Adams up four to nothing. Jackson with the three ball. The Grizzlies connected on six first half three pointers and held a 10 point lead. Phoenix came in off the bench to score seven points in place of the foul plague Nicholas K, but it was Adams who took the lead into halftime. Second half, Metro with a one point lead, 11 minutes left to go, and watch number 10. He's going to try and come off the bench and sneak onto the court because Adam State only has four guys on the floor, and that's a no no. Jefferson drains both technical fouls, and the tie turns in favor of the Roadrunners. Jefferson with the steal, he has the easy layup, it doesn't fall, but Miller right there for the putback. Next Adam possession, another turnover. Morris comes up with it, finds Mitch McCarron, he flies to the basket uncontested for two points. Metro again in transition, Jefferson to K for the alley-oop, there it is. Metro runs away with the 88-71 win to remain the only unbeaten team in the RMAC. I don't know if this was the momentum changer, you tell me. They forget to check someone in. You guys get two technical free throws, then you go on a 10-0 run. It's amazing how something that little can change the momentum of a game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were looking for something like that, just some little mistake, something we can jump on, get the energy back up. Um, and then BJ knocked the free throws, so yeah, it got us going, definitely. I told their radio guy that um, whoever limits their, their mistakes, that was a mistake, the technical right there. Um, you know, uh, the, and, and you saw Mitch start going in transition, you know, to get 16 rebounds in a game like that. You know, I mean, he, he was all over the place, but it was just a team effort. And uh, what we talk, I, I thought the game was decided with toughness and conditioning in the second half. Our conditioning showed. Coach Clark and the gang finished off the month of January with wins over 17th ranked Fort Lewis at home and road wins over Colorado Mesa and Western State to remain unbeaten at 17-0 and 13-0 in conference play. This incredible start is actually the best start in Metro men's history and now they are ranked number one in the nation for the fourth time in the program's history. Coach Clark doing a fantastic job with this group, but it will be tested once again as they take on Adams State and Fort Lewis on the road in mid-February. Still to come on the show? Our women's basketball team is back on the winning track after a rough start to the season, but they will be challenged in January, including a date for the top five powerhouse. Stay tuned to find out how they did. We're coming right back on the Roadrunner Review. The Roadrunner Review is brought to you by its proud sponsors, Panorama Orthopedics and Spine Center. From sports injuries to spine injuries to total joints for arthritis, they are in your neighborhood caring for your injuries. Located at three convenient locations, Golden, Littleton, and Thornton. Welcome back. Time to get you caught up with the women's basketball team now. The Roadrunners rebounded off a tough 2-4 and four November to go 4-1 and one in the month of December. And a huge part of that comes from the three seniors who have found their roles in head coach Tanya Jave's offense. It was great to see Emily Wood, the Valencia Twins, take the reins of this squad as they head into January with some big tests ahead of them. Metro State hosted New Mexico Highlands at the Auraria Event Center to kickstart January's schedule. Cowgirls guard Alyssa Lopez hits the trifecta, and we are tied at 11 early in the contest. Now let the three-point of Palooza begin for the home team. Emily Wood starts it off from the wing, then Wood again from long range. Number three comes from Cassie Lambrecht from the other side. Lambrecht again from deep. Kai DeGarmo gets into the act, and DeGarmo again as the Roadrunners drain nine first-half three-pointers to take a 21-point lead into halftime. The nine long balls were a season high. DeGarmo finishes with 13 points, and the 11 threes were the most in a game since 2008. The win gave Coach Javi her 100th win as a collegiate head coach. Just what does it mean, obviously, to get, the, get your 100th career, 100 win here at Metro? It's pretty nice. I mean, I had no idea that that was happening, so thank you for telling me. But, yeah, it's nice. I mean, uh, it's great. There's been a lot of them have come here, and they've been great wins here. So uh, that is a tribute to all the players, all the staff that's been here. So it's a, it's a nice feeling, but I really you want to share that with the, this programmatic, this programmatic uh, milestone, I guess. 
Kristen Valencia recorded five steals and took over seventh place on the all-time Roadrunner list as Metro State walloped Western New Mexico 85-37 at the Aurora Event Center. The team then hit the road to Lakewood the next weekend and held off a furious late game rally by the Cougars to escape with a four-point win. Amy Nelson led the team with 17 points. Yeah, you know, it's, it's really hard playing on the road and we did a good job. Getting, finding a way to win, and it's hard. We had some turnovers that we shouldn't have had, but we never gave up and fought to the end, and that's how we got the win. It's hard coming off with three years of not playing. I'll be the first to admit that, but I'm having fun, having, having a good time playing again, and I'll, you know, I'm just trying to be that leader that I always knew I could be. The Rams raced out to an 11-0 lead in Golden against the Colorado School of Mines the next night, but Mines guard Angie Charchalis was unstoppable, scoring 21 points, snapping Metro's seven-game winning streak in the 57-56 loss. Well, I think just missed opportunities, missed layups, missed free throws. I mean, we missed a lot of free throws down the stretch. Um, some missed assignments defensively. You know, it was a low-scoring game, but it just seemed like every shot that they needed to fall, it fell. Every shot we needed, it just didn't fall. So it was one of those nights. Um, but you gotta give mine some credit. They they played pretty hard. I felt like we were up 13 to two, and we just they stepped up their game. We didn't match that intensity. Coach Javi and the bunch returned back home in the Mile High City to take on the Grizzlies from Adams State to try and get back in that win column. Adams forward Kelly Hernandez was a beast for the road team, scoring 24 points. Well, Metro has their own inside presence as Kristen Valencia finds Amy Nelson in the paint. The junior scored nine of her 13 points in the first half. Second half now, Kristen takes his long two-pointer, and Metro pushes their lead out to 14. But the Grizzlies make a run. Keandra White slashes to the hoop for the layup, and Adams has his game within four. The veterans, however, take over for the home team. Woods splashes in this three-pointer. DeGarmo finds Lambrecht all alone in the paint for the easy deuce. And finally, Nelson goes around Hernandez for two more, and the Roadrunners win game number 10 on the season in the 59-47 win. The next night, Metro State took on Fort Lewis at the event center, and this game featured the league's top two teams the past two seasons, and this game did not disappoint. Ashley Kuchar drops in that three ball, giving the Skyhawks a 22-15 lead early in this contest. Runners rally, Nelson fakes grow out of her sneakers for the two points in the paint. Then Lambrecht can't be stopped, flying to the glass for two more. The home team up by two at the break. It's getting dicey in the second half. Kuchar connects on back-to-back -back long balls to take a one-point lead with 1.13 left in the game. But Lambrecht responds with a layup and some clutch free throws to squeak out the 63-60 win. The Roadrunners got back on the road the following weekend and took on Colorado Mesa, the fourth ranked team in the nation. Metro had to rally from a 19 point deficit just to get it within one, but the Mavs were just too strong down the stretch, winning 73 to 67. Tough battle indeed. However, they did win the next night in a convincing 17 point win against Western State. Metro now stands 12 and 6 overall and 10 and 3 in conference play. Still to come on the Roadrunner Review, how about a little fresh air? The spring sports season is almost here, and we'll have the baseball and softball season previews up next, so don't venture too far from that couch. Are you a college student that needs a place to live? Are you still living with your parents and want your own space? The Regency Student Housing is perfect for you. The community offers many amenities such as a fitness center, two basketball courts, big screen amphitheater, all you can eat dining hall, bowling alley, arcade, free parking, and a shuttle to and from the Auraria campus. For more information, please call 303-477-1950 or visit our website at regencystudenthousing.com. Everything that makes your world hum is right here with Dax. Need it? Dax it. The Roadrunner Review would like to thank its sponsors. Jason's Deli. Real food is fresh, higher quality, more flavorful, less processed, and naturally better tasting. Get real food at any Jason's Deli location. And the Boulder Broker Inn, a proud partner and preferred hotel for Metro State Athletics. Thanks for coming back as we enter into spring. The weather really doesn't get any better for us Denverites. In fact, February and March can be the most snow-filled months. That doesn't stop our baseball and softball teams from getting out there and battling the elements. First, we'll bring you our baseball team who has their sights set on better things in 2013. Kevin has more. 
Thanks, Eric. Coming into last season for the baseball team, you could have called it a rebuilding year. The team had a new coach and had to replace 18 seniors. Head coach Jared Oz went through some growing pains in his first year, but has some big plans for this year to come. Let's go to regionals, win regionals, and hopefully get to the World Series and win that. I mean, that's one of those things that, that we want to get accomplished and, and get done, and, and it's definitely one of our goals. Last year, the team had 10 freshmen who accounted for 40% of the team's RBIs, and they're going to be called upon again to make this goal a reality. For you know a bunch of young guys, throwing them into the mix right away, um, they, they did a phenomenal job going through the process. and They had their ups, they had their downs, but they really grew, and that's really what you're looking for for young guys. One of those players is Daryl Baca, who in addition to leading the team in home runs last season, was named Freshman of the Year and was named to both the conference and regional preseason team this year. He had a great year last year. He's got a phenomenal work ethic. Um, he shows up to the yard every day and, and gets done what he needs to get done. And, you know, he'll, he'll continue to, to progress the way he has and he'll continue to lead our team. I was trying to I go out and prove myself, I guess, knowing you know, what I had done um, last year. So, you know, just trying to be within myself, take what I did last year, build on it, and know that there's not a whole lot of, I guess, myself that I need to put on the field. I need to just go out there and play ball. With five returning starters to this year's squad, the pitching staff looks to improve on a team ERA that ranked fifth out of eight in the conference. Uh, it's coming together real well. It's a lot better than last year, actually. We have probably like four or five guys who are hitting 90, and we have a lot more depth. Last year we had maybe three or four bullpen guys. This year we have eight or nine. The team was picked fifth in the preseason coaches poll, so for them to accomplish their goal, it would definitely prove some doubters wrong. The Roadrunners kick off their season against Fort Hayes State on February 8th for a four-game set at home at Auraria Field, barring any Mother Nature setbacks. Came at Radio will have live radio broadcasts of selected games, so check out GoMetroState.com to stay connected to our baseball team. Thanks, Kevin. Looks like those super sophomores are going to wreak all kinds of havoc on the RMAC this season. We still have plenty ahead on the show, including our softball season preview. The RMAX home run queen is back for another season for the red and blue. And her own Justin Taylor sits down with women's basketball star Cassie Lambrecht, who tells us her long and arduous journey to Metro State. Don't go anywhere. I'm Jonathan Morris, power forward from the Metro State basketball team. 805 mark. Oh! J Mo! Coleman, you better bring that in right or don't bring it in at all. And you're watching the Metro State Broadcast Network. I'm Kristen Valencia, senior forward for the Metro State women's basketball team. So Kristen Valencia out hustles two Loper defenders, and that one's good. And you're watching the Metro State Broadcast Network. Get rowdy. Welcome back to the Roadrunner Review. We're staying on the diamond in this segment as the Roadrunner softball team is coming off a winning 2012 season. But what is the store for the 2013 campaign? Eric has more. Thanks, Kevin. While the team did finish with a winning record last season, the RMAC tournament run didn't quite end the way that second-year head coach Christy Lansford and the team expected. But with the conference's leading pitcher and the league's top hitter, a deeper run might be in store for the 2013 team. Peter Aragon has the full story. The Metro softball team slides into their second season under head coach Christy Lansford. While the transition to a new head coach is never easy, Coach Lansford has earned the respect of her team with her calm demeanor. For the most part, we all had to adjust a lot, but she's taught me so much and she's a lot like me and kind of a silent leader. She's a lot different than the past coaches that I've had, but she's, she's a quiet leader and she's a strong leader and she has high expectations for us, which she should because I think we're good enough and we're talented enough to live up to those. So she definitely pushes us. And Coach Lansford's expectations are high as she is shooting for more than the RMAC title. I want to win the RMAC, and bigger than winning the RMAC, I want to go back to regionals. I want to go back to the World Series. I want, that's what I want to do, but we have to do one step at a time, and so we have to win one game at a time, but, but that's what I want to do with this team. I want to go back. With the team returning seven of the nine starters to the lineup, the conference also has high expectations, picking the runners to finish fourth in the conference. One key player the team brings back to their offense is the Spear Street smasher, Kelsey Tillery, who tied the Division II lead with 23 home runs last season, but she doesn't want to focus on what happened in the past. My goals this season is to not think about last year. Um, it's a new year and new players, new coaches, all that. And my goal is to be the best catcher, be the best leader, and be the best hitter I can every time I'm up at the plate. Returning to the mound will be one of the best pitchers in the RMAC, Aubrey Mall, who had an impressive 2012 campaign sporting a 19-9 record with a 3-2-9 ERA. 
Coach believes Maul can be even better this year. I think she has the ability to if she just has a lot of confidence and goes in with the same mindset that she had last year. I think that she has the ability to come in and, and have another great season. With Maul well installed in the number one pitcher spot, fellow senior Brittany Moss looks to take over as the number two. Maul says their tandem on the mound could be the difference between an RMAC tournament invite and an RMAC title. She's huge and you know we've been together for four years now and um, you know, I learned a lot from her my freshman year, and you know, I think we work off of each other, so it, it'll be a good season for us. With a one-two punch of Maul and Moss and the home run ability of Tillery, the runners look to return to dominance in the conference. Thanks, Peter. The Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference has Metro State finishing fourth in the preseason coaches poll behind Colorado Mines, Colorado Christian, and Fort Lewis. Maul and Tillery were named to the preseason all-conference team and should bring a ton of excitement and wins to this year's team. Kevin? All right, thanks, Eric. We still have top plays and an exclusive interview with women's basketball guard Cassie Lambrecht. You don't want to miss this incredible story of determination and drive for the game she loves. We'll be right back. Metro State Roadrunners one of the most successful Division II programs in the nation. Six national championships. 65 conference championships in the RMAC. 248 All-Americans. The season is almost here and admission is free for all students. Great prizes will be handed out at select games, so make sure you're in the crowd. You can also follow the Roadrunners through Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and GoMetroState.com. Get in the game and get rowdy. We're back here on the Roadrunner Review. You know the basketball season just flies by every season. You know we're enamored with points, championship wins, all that great stuff. But before you know it, season's over. Isn't it the truth? And while our athletes are fighting it out on the court every week, we hardly see or understand the battles they may have faced just getting to that point. Our own Justin Taylor reaches beyond the basketball court to tell you the tale of Cassie Lambrecht and her fight to don the red and blue. Passes it to Lambrecht who goes up and trickles in. Junior point guard Cassie Lambrecht is typical in many ways, but when you scratch the surface, she has a classic Metro State story. Cassie was born and raised in Colorado. She came up with a brother and sister, followed in their steps, and ended up playing basketball. Pretty typical stuff. But while attending Golden High School, Lambrick's story started to stray from the regular. My sophomore year I tore my ACL. About six months later I found out I had a hole in my heart and I needed to have heart surgery. So I had that heart surgery, sat out for a couple months, and then about a year later I had another ACL. After heart surgery and multiple ACL reconstructions, Cassie's heart and knee were healed and so was her game. She earned back-to-back 4A -back Player of the Year awards in her junior and senior season and the collegiate basketball world took notice. I had a letter from Texas. Um, I had DePaul looking at me. Lambert chose to stay close to home and attended the University of Northern Colorado in Greeley. But during her freshman season, she found her first collegiate injury. A little less than half the season, I fractured my back and was told I wasn't hurt, so I continued to play as long as I could. With that pain, I mean, it was, it was hard to get through the whole season, but I managed to do it. Rehab for a fractured back kept Cassie in a brace for nine months and eventually claimed her sophomore year, forcing her to redshirt the 2009-2010 season. Entering her third year on UNC's campus, Cassie was completely rehabilitated and ready to hit the floor. Her excitement for the season was short-lived. My junior year, I practiced at all of preseason and then four practices before our first game, I tore my ACL. Despite the tailspin scenario that Cassie was experiencing on the basketball court, her studies never wavered. Lambert finished her special education degree within four years. After completing her degree and finally feeling healthy, Cassie was ready to make another return to the basketball court. It was really hard mentally to try and, you know, try and get back to where I used to be. Junior guard from Colorado Springs, Colorado number four, Cassie Lambert. This season, Cassie is playing nearly 30 minutes per game, averaging 10 points and 3 assists, 
while fitting into her role as starting point guard for the Roadrunners. I asked Cassie to write the end of her story at Metro State, and this is what she had to say. Our MAC champions. And national champions, of course. <laughs> Thanks, Justin. Now it's time for the top plays from the month of January, and they are brought to you by Miller Coors. We'll start off with some indoor track and field in play number five. Men's sprinter John Clark breaks the school record in the 60 meters back on January 12th at the Air Force All-Comers Meet. The junior finished the race in 6.94 seconds. The previous mark was held by the former great Derek Fiorini. On to play number four, and it's a three-point palooza from the women's game against New Mexico Highlands at home. The runners drained nine in the first half alone and finished with 11, the most in the game since 2008. Lambert led the way, draining four of four from beyond the arc. Metro making it rain at home. Let's go back to that Metro State Adams State thriller as we bring you the call from an exciting play. He's up with the rebound, he's gonna push it up. Jefferson, the alley oop, case slam it home. Nicholas K. Look at that the bench. Motion. The bench is on their feet. Oh. That might be the exclamation point on this game. Back to women's hoops as Kristen Valencia brought her A game against Armac rival Fort Lewis. Kristen scored 10 points, grabbed 15 rebounds, dished out three assists, and even had a big block against one of the conference's best in Ashley Kuchar. She was a big reason her team took down the Skyhawks in the 63-60 nail bite. Valencia, definitely one of the best players in the RMAC time for play number one. And it's men's basketball as they battle to the final moments against 17th rake Fort Lewis at home. Metro is clinging on to a one point lead with 20 seconds left, needing a big shot, and here it is. Shot clock yep. in the clock clock. McCarran gives it up to Cooper. Cooper for three, and he nails it! Tyler Cooper! Wow, the, what a shot! The three from Tyler Cooper. That was our own Todd Diamond as the runners defeated the Hawks 71 to 65 to remain unbeaten. Those were your top plays brought to you by Miller Coors. Miller Coors wants everyone to remember to drink responsibly. So many great plays from January, but how about that men's team? Spectacular, number one in the nation, so much fun. Yeah, so exciting. That's awesome, I can't wait for that road trip down to Grand Junction in Alamosa. It's gonna be yeah. a fun trip. Hopefully the weather's nice, right? <laughs> <laughs> and remember to visit GoMetroState.com for everything you need to know about Metro State sports. And make sure you check us out next month for more high-flying Metro State action. For the Roadrunner Review, he's Eric Lansing, she's Paula Rillas, I'm Kevin Hall, and we'll see you next time.